because I think of this in terms of visual. That, I mean, the, the story came from a visual thing in the first place yes. because the words came from the visual images that I had. But now you're taking the story and you're reconverting it into sound, which is which is fascinating. You know, it's gone through a, a well, it's gone through a metamorphosis really, uh -huh. from a visual to a written to a back to music again, which is which is it's fascinating. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. fascinating. Sorry, go on. Um, but um, as we said earlier, you know, about the, the colour palettes yes. and how that in turn is suggesting a tonal palette mm. yeah. um, for me musically. Yeah. Um, it, it gives me lots of um, cues and, and just the, the feel uh, that we're perhaps looking for in certain chapters yeah. um, and throughout those chapters. a couple of times through and what I've done is just make a few notes for myself. What I've been trying to do is sort of summarise the main action and pick out what I, th I think are maybe the, the salient points, words, sounds, atmosphere that might be useful sure. to me yeah. in terms of creating music yeah. and then distill down from that in a bit more detail, the kind of feel, tone, timbre of yeah. different instruments perhaps that we might want to use to evoke ambience or, or create atmosphere or aspects of action. For instance, if it's is feeling fear, danger, um, happiness, yeah. whatever. I can let you hear a wee tiny bit of what I was thinking for well, the that would be lovely. Just that would be nice. I think what's nice about this is most people would not necessarily expect there to be sound and sound effects and music to a, to a storybook, to a storybook that's been spoken. They would just expect it as words. And I think this idea of the combination again, because the book's a combination of illustrations and it's a, and it's a combination of my illustrations and Sunida's design. And now as we go into the audio book, it's the combination of music and design and, and, and uh, you know, so the whole thing started to move. Well, let's it. face it, I mean, it was Lisa that gave us the inspiration for the video book because Absolutely. Lisa suggested an audio book and we thought, just a minute, we do videos. Yes. So let's let's do a video book. Yes, it so, does. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. that's where it all starts. Well, you know, that came just because I think you've got a great reading voice, Paul. Beautiful voice for <laughs> oh, listening We shall see. <laughs> Bear in mind the quality of... So quite sparse, quite gentle. No, I see that. I see that. There's an expectation in that, actually. Well, that's what I was hoping for, yeah. to be honest, that it's leading into something, yes. but not giving away too much. Um, no, it's nice. but I'm trying to keep away from minors. I'm terrible for introducing minor keys into everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to keep it melodic and up and happy. And so I'm just sort of playing about. <clears throat> so the starting theme from page 10. quite a close, intimate sound. Yes, yeah, that'd be nice. Like 
one such wayfarer was a young girl by the name of Fizz. Sounds odd? Of course, it is a nickname. Given to her by her mother, it began as a shortened version of her full name, Felicity. Soon, however, her whole family took it up as it epitomised the enthusiasm and energy that she put into life. Her mother often teased her lovingly, liking her to a constantly bubbling glass of champagne. As a consequence, her long dark hair often fell awry, forcing Fizz to gaze at the world from beneath a heavy fringe which almost covered her eyes completely. One ankle sock was most frequently found at half-mast, since she seldom had the time to pull up both at the same time. Her frenetic yet playful temperament meant that she was always far more comfortable. Yes, and the exchange um, that, that comes between them is, is very comic. And oh, yeah, it's about misunderstandings yeah. and, yeah. you know, what did you do that for? And, you know, there's just those ba basic things as they kind of are introducing each other. Mm. Both are strong willed characters as yes. well. That's the yes. other thing. That comes across. They're both quite feisty and they're just <laughs> getting to, they want to stand their ground, but at the same time, what they're curious and, you know, so it is quite a comic exchange that they have. Well, I also wanted that point, which often happens in conversation where pe two people are talking and actually they're not really listening to everything the other one says. So, you know, that's where the misunderstanding is coming. They're so interested in putting their own point forward because Webstrand's a little bit upset at being kicked off the bed. And yes. Fizz, is, Fizz wants her own way. Yes. So that sort of interplay. Our mutual friend, Alistair Taylor, who's, oh. uh, who, who we all know yeah. um, of old um, and who I've collaborated with on a couple of other projects. Mm. Um, and he's as we know, a wonderful uh, yes, player, a oh, fantastic fabulous. young musician. Mm. Um, and I was thinking it would be really lovely to involve him in yes. this. He plays mandolin and guitar. And I was thinking I would quite like to hear maybe something like that, perhaps on the mandolin. Oh, oh wow. Um, because I think the mandolin has that lovely lightness of touch, uh, more, more so than the guitar. Yeah. It has that delicate, light um, sound and yeah. feel yes. that I think would work beautifully in this and maybe at the very beginning. Um, I would need to hear it probably in the mandolin first. Yes, yes. Um, But it's a thought. It's a thought. Yeah. So um, I have spoken to Alistair and he is um, right up for being involved. Oh, He's very, very chuffed to be asked. Um, as well, well I mean, because we he like knows him, you we guys. Knows, well, we like him, he knows a good musician. Well, yeah, I mean, we saw it from yeah. when he was very young, really. Mm -hmm. Those sessions right. all those years ago, and those That's paintings right. of yours. Yes, That's right. Awesome yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He features in, Absolutely. in many of the paintings from mm -hmm. those folk sessions. So, um, so yes, um, Alistair's away on tour just now with his band, The Elephant Sessions, um, and is due back around the end of November. Um, and then my thoughts were to get together with him and so this what you hear just now is kind of the uh, re reprise or reprise of the opening section so it's the same tune but in the opening section of chapter one it's just piano right but this bit is the same bit of tune but with mandolin and just played slightly differently right. um, but effectively kind of the same piece so this is um, yeah the end of chapter one into chapter two, yeah. just where Fizz meets Webstrand for the first the time. time. Yeah. <coughs>
So it's not been fixed yet or anything, so the levels of the instruments are no, just as they are, sort of thing. The Elfin was using both hands to gesture downward at her own body. Fairies are imaginary, but as you can see, I'm real. Fizz found that she couldn't argue with that and looked a little stumped. Then a question did dash into her mind and she smiled. Do Elfin have names? Do cows have horns? The Elfin replied. And then there was a moment of silence as they both thought about it. Of course they do. Elfin, that is, do have names. I'm Webstrand. How do you do? Another moment of silence came and went as Fizz took this in. Well, go on then. That's me, snorted the Elfin. Next little bit is fun as well. We're on to page 55, where, where Webstrand um, is trying to find the right clothes because Fizz is affected by the astroplasm and is floating up uh, around the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, she gives Webstrand the, the job of rummaging through drawers, wardrobe, shelves, leaving chaos in her wake. Um, Fizz, meanwhile, performed a multitude of cartwheels in the air, trying to dress herself suitably for the journey, watching her gymnastics. Webstrand rolled about in the bed below in fits of hysterics. Um, so it's, I think that's a very lovely um, little comic section mm. there, where in my mind I'm seeing all this going on, uh, you know, Fizz performing cartwheels and trying to get the grips, get the grips with this feeling of uh, no gravity and floating about. Well, it's Meanwhile, not easy to put your socks on in mid-air. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I think we've, most of us have seen, you know, astronauts trying to do things in space and yeah, suddenly every the smallest little thing takes it's on yeah. a whole new challenge. And I love the idea of, of Webstrand then having the job of being down below trying to find the right clothes Listen, and rummaging yeah. through it. That, that just... Mm. Uh, conjures up for me a, a very a lovely little comic um, picture. So, just a, a little idea for there. I have a lively jig, and again, it might be nice on mantle oh, and that's guitar. Oh, a nice idea. <laughs> oh, I love it. That kind of the driving effect of the piano I feel that's quite... No, that's, it's also... Quite there's a comic. Sort of a, and there's a hurrying thing, you know, like getting ready. Yeah, you, the, there's the frantic yeah. thing. The, the slight frantic yeah. thing, yes, yeah, yeah. of trying um, to get ready. So, for, for instance, you know, Alistair may, could maybe do something on the mandolin higher up, so it's sort of cutting through, mm. uh, up, you know, up there, and that sort of yes. register. Um, and I'm kind of driving it with that... along those lines. Yeah. Now, another bit we did this morning that you might like to hear um, is a little jig. Oh, yes. Uh, now, <laughs> this is where um, Fizz is up in the ceiling and she's sort of stuck up there and Webstrand is looking through the drawers, pulling out clothes and trying to find stuff. Yeah, 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 you mentioned it the last time we met, yes. And I just thought that would be a lovely mm. thing. But, of course, there's no visual, is there? There's no, no, there isn't a visual, but this is exactly what we were that. thinking of, you see, the mixture of visual and music. It's like the vignettes. They do a job that the big paintings don't do and the music can do the same job, you know, in a different way, yeah.
that's very good. I can see that would be the words actually good. This is going far beyond what I expected, Lisa, to be honest. Because you, you're now a sound effects person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm just inspired by, this, by your story and, and the no, you're paintings. Going, you're going Paul, beyond you know. what, uh, really, you are really going beyond what I expect. It's fabulous. No, I'm really well, excited. Well, I can't help my mind sort of running on yes. the head and yes. thinking, well, how would that work and what yeah. could we use there? I don't want to get into the realms of cheesiness, though. I don't no, want to no. make your, the video book in any way no, no. cheesy with yeah. too many yeah. sound yeah. effects or cliched. Yes. This is not a film, so, it's actually a video yes. book. Yeah. Yes, so, well, the next little bit of um, note that I've got here is relating to page 48, actually. 48, right. Um, 48. Where Fizz um, is staring up at the so that's this one. ceiling, and a gleam mm -hmm. appears in the corner. Right. Um, and the light starts to sort of expand mm -hmm. in a golden light of golden triangle mm. um, and this of course is the, the start of the star wave, wave. Yeah. Um, and there's sort of throbbing lines of blue energy so again that might be somewhere where if it starts to see the light coming through it's sort of pulsating sort of flickering appears as a, a golden triangle so I think that might work where we might have something suggesting that light um, yes, I've been um, messing about a wee bit with some of the weird and wonderful sounds on the keyboard. Um, so again, I haven't thought of any music here, it's just like a sound, a soundscape. But, but still not not scary. Yes. Um, so. I, I think it might be too subby, but also I think the subbiness is awesome at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> is it those piano notes that are in there <clears throat> somewhere? So I'm just wondering if we could maybe bring them up just a wee bit. Mm -hmm. Do you know where this overwhelming kind of that we've gone for so long. I don't know, maybe it's just... just thinking maybe... That 
the glow increased, but strangely, it seemed as if the light was flowing inward towards its center, like water disappearing into a plug hole. Without warning, the light expanded, feeling almost physical as it touched Fizz's cheeks. She was startled by the sudden change, expecting a pop or at least some sort of sound. The expansion of light, however, was totally noiseless. In its center hung a golden aperture, triangular in form and throbbing with cold power. Behind it, a tunnel stretched away into infinite distance. Down its sparkling golden length swept lines of blue energy, disappearing into a distant silver incandescence. and sound in this really than I expect. I mean that's what's lovely about it and I mean you've got a tremendous amount here but even if you're only to have half of these in there'd be, there'd be loads but I mean I think the more the merrier because I think it's just adding and adding and adding I really do and the stuff that you've already done works so well and I can hear the words working well against that. So much so much for one track per chapter though. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is what happens, it happens to this us, isn't open. it? We start out with an idea for something, <laughs> like the waistcoat, and then look at all the things that we're now cooking up because of Ruth's embroidery, and it, this is what's happening. Well, the vignettes too, I mean, the vignettes took off in yes, the people. Yes, all those vignettes. Little drawings and yep. then yes. they became paintings, yeah. so. And they themselves are now suggesting all kinds of things <laughs> to me and to you know, Sunita and, and Ruth. At the end of chapter two, Fizz is in the bedroom and, and Webstrand has, has appeared and the swarm is, is just appearing. Just like um, so we've gone from well, what I've written here, sounds like rustling leaves. Yeah. She floats up, gets her clothes on um, and then the stairway opens and there's sort of sounds like rustling leaves. So that's what we're left with at the end wings, of chapter yes. two, yeah. the earth and wings, yes. Yeah. Then starting chapter three, uh, and, and these are really just the, the things that have le leapt out to me for Fine. things that yeah, yeah. Um, are maybe important points. So we've got the swirling colours and the whirl of multicoloured wings. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a lovely um, sort of picture to start with, in, well, in my mind. <laughs> um. Okay, cool. So the end of the chapter is the introduction of the wings and the next one starts with the wings. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. words sort of in, run into it and then out of it sort of thing. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a definite transition. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Yeah. Cool. Happy with those high stuff now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you. Um, how many of the guitar strums are in there? Uh, so there's two big ones, oh. and then there's two that sort of say. Oh. Johnson, what? I feel like the track is sort of softening down and that another big one would be it not make sense. Yeah. I mean let, let's let's have a look. Let's let's try one sort of further towards the end. I think it just stands out a bit too much there. Yeah. Well, let's let's have a listen from further back and then we can
Yeah, cool. Okay. thing by the time we got the first work through of the book she had done four or five maybe six or seven manifestations before she was happy enough to show us what she thought could be the basis of this book and then from that that's what these bonus features in the vignettes are all about There's, that shows the process of her discussing with Paul from her initial idea how that could be built on and that's all we're doing we're all building yes. on these are all layers. Well, that's what's so nice yes. about these videos. You're showing how ideas grow. Yes. From a, yes. And from that's the purpose the of them. very early concept. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we could have actually just waited for you to produce all the music and come to us with... But that takes the joy out of it for us as well. I mean, we've got the chance to, you know, peek over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's just all part of the, the process, isn't, isn't it? it? The, the and it's good of you to share it. Oh, well. I yep. think it's a great idea to to be doing these sort of videos because it, you know, it, I guess it just gives people an insight um, as to you know how, how things come about and particularly in collaboration. I think yes. that's particularly interesting the yes. collaborative process. And, and I've watched the video that um, you put up um, with Ruth yeah. and in the the waistcoat and the stitching and I find it absolutely fascinating. Um, because that's an area I know nothing about, yeah. um, and so for me that was wow. God, well, we learnt so amazing much. Amazing. And as Paul said, when what Paul watched the video after being made, he said he wasn't aware of all of that because he was involved. We're all interacting with each other in a very subtle way because what you say now may affect what I do on on a vignette, you know, and. and and so again, the idea grows. Things. I mean, this book hasn't been. You know, I didn't produce the book years ago, and it stayed that way. It's it's morphed all the time. It's evolved. It's evolved, and it's evolved not just because of me, but it's evolved because of everybody around me putting things into it, and it's changed it. So it's still evolving now. And it's still evolving. Yeah. Just just yesterday we evolved. We, 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 change something again you know so things change continually and that's really what's exciting about it it, 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 yes. it sort of lives it has a life yes. say, which, yes. is, which is quite you know no, I, I find that whole collaborative thing very exciting it's it's what really fires me up you know <laughs> as, as a musician aspects in the story that were leaping out to me was the sense of the the space, the sense of space, yeah. the cavern, yeah. um, the, well we've already spoken about the glacial ice blues and the purity, but also the pillars of crystal, mm. the pulsating blue light, mm. that's really fascinating for me, and the sound of air sizzling the crystals reacting to the intrusion by Fizz and the mm. Elven mm. Swarm yeah. as they move through it. Yeah. So it's not just a static, these aren't just yeah. static they're forms, interact they're, they're interacting, yeah. which yeah. Is, is fantastic. Yeah. And again, what's leapt out at me, the blue fire on a pillar, the flickering tongue of plasma towards them with a crack. So, you know, I, in my, my head I'm imagining like a whiplash sort of all, almost mm. coming out at them. So I think that suggests lots of musical possibilities. She often has a bubble of resistance and then there's a full plasma storm of tentacles from the, the crystal pillars and the roar um, of, the, of the crystal's anger. Um, and I, I love this next bit where the elephant begin to sing by way of pacifying uh, the crystals and their, their beautiful song uh, builds up as each elephant sort of takes it. So again, it's that building up. Um, well, I, I, was, I was thinking in terms of these, these structures and although they're heavy structures because they're crystalline, I was thinking that sound could echo and vibrate among, among, you know, among those. They, they could almost be like tuning forks in a way. Yes. You know, so massive as they are, 
they are something which is transparent, something which is made of crystal. Mm -hmm. And so not only the space, but the fact that they are hanging, you know, there's almost a bell-like quality yes. to that hanging. Yeah, I love that. Um, so, so, you know, all those things you're saying. Yeah. And, 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 and they have a sort of have a resonance. That's basically what yes. I'm trying to get back yes. to saying. They, yeah. You know, they resonate yeah. all the time. You know, what I was sort of starting to hear mm. of the Elven song, again, these are just three noodly ideas, was something between a lullaby or a lament, I think is what, what was in the story, which again is a lovely idea that, you, that those two are very close, the lullaby and the lament, mm -hmm. very close. Is it Webstrand who starts singing? So we could maybe just start, just single notes and mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. So if we take that as the a wee motif... Da, yes. da, 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 mm -hmm. sort of Celtic kind of mm, feel to I it. I always felt that. Um, well, inspired by your album and the track we used on, that, on our Christmas card and that was just perfect for it, which was that beautiful Celtic song that you wrote. That's lovely, thank you it's so nice. much. So I'm just trying to add other notes to build up so as the other elven voices are coming Come in. Here. And again, you know, um, coming in there, E flat. But I didn't start with the growling crystal sort of sound, but again, you could you could have something that yeah, angry, that one, yes. you know, even you know, an angry growl there, which gradually that, yeah. these notes come in and. Just as that builds, it slowly dissolves. Takes over that, and you know, just it recedes into the background. Um, but I love that idea, nice. and, and very often, you know, laments are traditionally in Celtic music. Laments were sung as lullabies, so you know, mothers would sing really quite heartrending story, a, a song with a heartrending story. My grandmother used to do this to me. I think that's probably why why it's stuck in a way. She used to sing songs uh, as a child. Used to have me crying, you know. But, is that right? Yes. This is in crystal caverns, so it's glacial and okay, cool. icy. Um, yeah.
to get from that bit, which was in the key of F. Yeah, those points transition straight into each other. Um, into the Elvin song, which I put in E flat. It doesn't necessarily have to be in E flat. <laughs> Sorry, it's probably too late in the day for me really to be doing this brain work right now. The voice will be coming in over that, because there's a song that is sort of teeming down the, the angry crystals, yeah. so it cuts into it. So it's fine, I'm still in that key. <laughs> transition you bet again okay. That was nice. Um, it's it sounds for a while quite um, like unnerving, it's supposed to be, yeah. and then it's got this sudden relief when you change that last note. Oh, well, that's what I was hoping for. Okay. You're gonna hate me. <laughs> hit me. <clears throat> um, I'm hearing something in the top. <laughs> The bass is there, the middle range stuff, I could really, I, I wanted to hear something really high and kind of, uh, just... Like on, on, on top of it. On the accordion or yeah, something on yeah, top of it. Yeah, another layer of just high, really high up. Um, I mean, I've got the accordion in the back of the car. Um, I don't know, I just kind of maybe, not throughout the whole thing, mm -hmm. but as... As the piece is going on, I'm just kind of here. there's something missing in the top range. It's kind of cool. needing a bit of. Yeah, is it a drop? Um, sorry. No, you need five minutes to drop it off. So this will only be coming through the headphones? It will do, exactly. yes.
Oh, there really is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, 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 it's such a creaky old, creaky old machine. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> She could hardly hear Webstrand's voice as she made every effort to be heard over the cacophony of sound. I think we'd better try to calm them down, Webstrand mouthed, and unexpectedly, against the roar, began to gently sing. Fizz thought the elephant would never be heard against the background roar, and indeed at first, the notes were overwhelmed. It seemed Webstrand was making a pointless gesture. However, one by one, the other elfin picked up the song. Gradually, it grew in dimension and eventually succeeded in enveloping the noise of the storm all around them. The result left Fizz breathless. A lullaby or a lament, she was not quite sure, but it went straight to the heart. Gradually, the pulsating of the blue plasma began to interweave with the rhythms of the song, and one by one, the tentacles snapped out of existence. Moving on to, to these pages here, and then we've got the sycamore tree, which in Fizz's mind has become the sycamosaur, this mm -hmm. great creature. Oh, this is the sycamosaur chasing her yes. in that little right. scene. Oh, right. um, so I think it might be good to end, it's quite an appealing ending rather than the fade out, um, because she's suddenly it's away. back, isn't back she? She's away from it, yeah. Yeah, it kind of ends like that, so it might be good to... <laughs>
Looks good. Cool. Oh, sorry. Cheers, cheers, my baby. Okay. That's alright, it sounded good. Well, it felt like you were enjoying yourself more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Should um, we? Should, let's do it one more time. Yeah, I'll hold on to that one and we'll yeah. put down the second take uh, of exactly the same thing. Yeah, so if I can, but you're changing the A. If I just keep on the C and the F, that's fine. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I changed my left hand to a B there, so that would be fine. That'd be uh, great, yeah. Yeah, right. that'd be great, yeah. And then just try putting in that B flat. Do you think do you think it might work if if you did jum 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 and if we do something on the drums there jum jum so I'm doing ba ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba ba da jum 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 you know just kind of like do 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 strums down. And we could that could tie in with <coughs> some mm -hmm. banging on the drum. <laughs> See if see if they will go together. I think the the difficulty is because my playing isn't exact there. I'm not sort of like you know that 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 I'm not bang on there. Mm. So it's kind of so it means that trying to play to it is quite yeah. difficult. <laughs> the trouble is I'm doing three against, in my right hand against two in yeah. the left, and that's the problem. It's <laughs> you know, so... We can race through the other stuff. This is, it. This, is it. this is taking longest, just because we haven't had the chance to sort of work it through. So there's sort of three layers in here at the moment. There's, so there's the piano straight off of yours yeah. with the... It's amazing how much that, that sort of symbol, the hi-hat, it's amazing how much that cuts through. Um, it's such like on the piano is so low, it's amazing how much it's cut through. Um, then there's the grand piano on that as well. Which I love. So I think I'm going to boost that up some more. It's 376, 77. The Sycamore Sore. This is the Sycamore Sore, isn't it? Giving chase. Love that. What was that scraping noise again? Did you do it on the mandolin? Mandolin, yeah. Just yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. We have thought about. Maybe putting some drumming in there or something? Yes. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, yes. yes. What I liked about that, it could be a terrifying image, but actually it sounds disconcerting more than terrifying. It's, yes. you know, not knowing. Mm -hmm. I like that. It really does. It's a point. Being scared, but a bit of the unknown.
Cool. Any thoughts about this song? I like it. Cool. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's cool. there, yeah, I like right. um, the levels and everything. It's, great, okay, I'll yeah. dance it down. The shots of comedy in this through the music would be perfect. It would there. be great. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. because I think it has such a lovely lightness of touch tone in the first part of the story that we want to make the most of that. I mean, there's humour throughout the whole story mm. anyway. Yes. You're, you're a very humorous writer. Well, I, I, mean, I think it's a relief because there are some dark areas in the book. Yes. And I wanted really there to be a contrast, so the bits of humour that come in. And, and I love how... how your humour has worked its way into uh, the, the the art as well. You well, they, they come into the vignettes. The the, the, the main paintings yes. tend to be more serious. Yeah. The the full the full plates tend to be the serious pieces of artwork, yes. and the vignettes tend to carry the humour yes. yeah. wherever they can. Yeah. So um, yes, I, I love the idea of the sound of a sea shanty coming through. Just yeah. hardly there, but this is where you're saying you just... that as long as you don't have to sing, but <laughs> what, I've, what I'm thinking oh, <laughs> is a hum, not, oh, not vocalised words. So I think between yourself and, and Alistair, who we'll speak about in a wee minute, um, maybe just a hum, humming of, you know, you need, kind of need more than one yes. male voice. Right. Maybe a wee bit of accordion, because accordion is very much, very much. associated absolutely. with the sea yes, shanties. Absolutely. So a wee touch of that might be nice. I think that's a super idea. Um, so that was one of the first mm. things that's kind of uh, let down to me. Page 14, yes, up to the second paragraph where we're talking about the the hundreds of um, snakes rising from the deck, the ropes twisting and turning um, as if to the pipe of a charmer. Would it help if, if I hummed it? That would probably be good. You start off and then you and can then, add, add yeah. the voices to mine. Yeah, that would be good. And then take mine out at the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't remember it. I was the fraction of last night. You're not the notes, Mm-hmm. 
as we're now approaching the end of the chapter, we want to kind of save the next bit of music, I think, for this, this next bit, because they're now coming into sight of a vast chasm, and there's soft glowing light as Fizz glimpses the nest for the first time, which you describe as ivory white, but it's a softness, it's a glowing softness, and the depth of the chasm is just so vast. And we're obviously at the end of chapter three into chapter four, a natural pause for, for music anyway, Absolutely. but I think we want to try and use that idea of the softness of the light and the, the depth of the darkness <laughs> and the, the, the chasm um, to try and convey the flavour of that um, in the music that we use at the end of chapter three. So um, again, just messing about with a few ideas. I always feel some of these things sound a bit unsubtle to begin with, you know. Um, if I can just maybe take that down a wee bit. Um, For, for the music to um, you know end the chapter three of the video book um, and into chapter four, um, yeah, various ideas sort of um, all spinning around in my mind. What I was doing there on the keyboard using that sort of string sound, um, that that's one idea. But we could also use that as a base right. for building on that. So I've just been trying out a couple of little little things, very very rough again. Um, like I said earlier, the accordion is great for kind of creating a big, big, spacey sort of sound and with a bit of reverb, you know, it's, it's amazing what you can do. So mm. this sounds very, very rough, but let me just right. let you hear, hear this. Um, so imagine loads of reverb on that and just mm. records it. Properly, <laughs> like an organ. Like yeah, yeah, the left hand of this accordion is very organ-like. The bass is very organ-like. Can't really hear it. Gradually, the trees thinned even more, and they came upon the edge of a vast chasm. They began to fly unerringly along its lip, following it like a highway. In this light, the rift appeared bottomless, and Fizz instinctively shivered to think of what might lurk in its depths. Ahead, a pattern of soft glowing light was emerging from the gloom. As they drew nearer, she could see that it emanated from an enormous growth that clung precipitously to the sheer cliff face. Her immediate thought was that it was some immense form of plant life. She had already witnessed stranger forms. Her perception was consolidated the closer they flew. The thing was most definitely organic, growing from the canyon wall itself. Gigantic ivory white root-like cords stretched in all directions across and into the rock face, anchoring it in place. These roots became hawser-like cables as they spiraled upwards, growing into the structure, crisscrossing and interweaving.
We all live in a world of skepticism, disbelief and doubt. But imagine, if you will, one filled with mystery and magic. Here, wishes can actually come true in a way you would hardly believe. Let me share with you the chronicle of an earthling who goes by the nickname Fizz, whose creative imagination and zest for life leads her on a remarkable journey. A journey which was to change her life forever, on which her guide was none other than Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. Watch as I depict the story of Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. Through my scene setting, original Masterworks oil paintings. And the many storytelling illustrations that capture this epic tale. And listen as this chronicle of a wondrous journey is told. Well spotted, Fizz, Webstrand congratulated. Yes, it is an eye gem, but the flash doesn't develop until it's linked to its own special wearer. Owning an eye ring isn't just like wearing a piece of jewellery. It becomes the wearer's companion and can't be used by anyone else. And listen to the original musical soundtrack and soundscape that undulates through the good times and bad, the joy and horrors, the magical and real, the very essence of Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. Next time you look up into the royal blue of an evening sky and spy a falling star, think of the elfin. Somewhere not so far away, they are gathering their numbers to follow that star until it reaches Earth, where, hidden in the undergrowth, they will find their treasure, an elfin egg that has traversed the star fields to reach its destination. You may well see them on their journey home, carrying their egg between them. Tiny specks against the night sky, only visible when they cross a bright star or the face of a full moon. <laughs>